New Zealand is a farming country. Through the length of both the North and South Islands stretch the sheep and dairy farms. Farms that are the quiet background to New Zealand's spectacular scenery. Farms that are the very lifeblood of the country's prosperity. and a big warm welcome to the grassroots in Gumboots. Brought to you here by ruraltv.co.nz. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a fantastic night in front of you here tonight. Venison is the best meat, as you know, in the world, and this woman has the job selling it for you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sharon. Sharon has been the powerhouse behind the branding at Silver Fern Farms. Wining and dining chefs selling less meat for more money. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a bloody good fella. He's from down in Southland. His name is Tony Glynn. You're rude not to, Tony. We're rude men, Michael. Auckland needs rude men. Move over country calendar. Tony, welcome here. Tony's paving the way for the future of rural television. Next up, a farming mum from Mayfield. She's nearly got as many followers on Facebook as Beyonce. <laughs> Chanel O'Sullivan is here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Chanel, welcome. Come and grab a seat. Tonight, of course, is all about grassroots. Is not more grassroots than the good old Swanee and the Red Bands. <laughs> You've got to wonder. We bring back to the stage the man behind the brand, Mr. Mark Nevin. And that's not all. We've got the sexiest country music singer in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you none other than Joni Dereen. I'm going to tell you what you had to catch her on the lips. Jody, um, You've, you've made a pretty big name for yourself out here. Loud. Number six at the moment. Yep, got the word about three days ago, actually. It's super exciting. Yeah. Look, you've been up there with big names. Toby Keith, uh, Gretchen, Wilson. Well, tell us more. Was it March? March, I was over in Australia um, at the CMC Rocks, The Hunter, and Toby Keith was headlining. And yeah, I got, got the opportunity to perform just prior to Kelly Pickler, actually. She's a big star in, a, in America and a huge idol of mine. So that was a huge, huge experience to get up there on that stage performing alongside those people. And I actually got to um, share the same dressing room as Gretchen Wilson, which was pretty cool. But she wasn't very friendly. <laughs> really? No, she wouldn't even let me get a photo with her. I used to go. What? Tony. <laughs> when? Now, Jody, it's not going to be all about singing the uh, national. You're going to be here tonight, later on, singing your new song, yet to be released, Tattoo. Tattoo, yeah. Ah, oh, where's your tattoo? I actually don't have a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I'll show yeah, you I'm going to have to get very really good at answering this question. <laughs> Come maybe, on. Uh, maybe I need to get one. No, um, it'll all make sense once you hear the song. It's. Um, um, the punchline in the song is actually be my tattoo tonight and it, the, the song was inspired I wrote it just after a relationship breakup actually and so mm. the tattoo was like something to heal heal my pain so it all makes sense once you hear the song you just have to listen to the lyrics really really really, really carefully we still get on quite good after the breakup <laughs> <laughs> enough about you at the moment honey. Mark I'm going to jump to you right now Swan Drive Hundred years. What a brand. That Tony, woman, that, that, Tony Glynn, I've seen him duck shooting with a couple of these on and uh, there's been a few stains down the front and a few cigarette marks, but um, hey, this has to be my favourite. Look at that. <laughs> we got the twin. That's it's a beautiful one. It's got the stains one. on it. That, that one also, that was designed after a breakup too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
I think it was. I think that was about 1923. I think we got the the brand got back together again a couple of times for a, for a couple of decades, but it, it didn't last. Um, Tony, I understand you're a bit of a man of the land. Um, most people around here are sporting a bit of uh, Swan Dry. Yourself? I like to look smooth, Blackie. As always. And I wear my Swan Dry on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, there's a family show. Oh. <laughs> so there we go. Yeah, I have been told, I don't have them on me, but apparently there's a pair to be given away, Tony. There is a pair to be given away. And we've nominated a man, to, a give man. The, uh, to give the swan dry underpants to tonight. He's a great man, and you probably all know him, everyone in this room. And we were doing a bit of a job at his place a year or so ago, filming a few stags. Very good stags they were. And I looked over to the clothesline when I was out having a smoke, and there was these big Y fronts out there with a few holes in them. And Graham Carr, we've got you some... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> some other pants. <laughs> Come on, Graham Carr! Come on, Graham. Come up and grab them. Graham's had a fair bit to say over the last few days, which has been great. <laughs> Tony I hasn't do worn them. Small. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, apparently, Mark Ellis wears them as well. He does. He, 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 he's, he, he's one of those guys that you, you, you'll know, Macca, he, he, you know, from what you've seen of him on TV. He loves having the nude days. God knows why, because he is so embarrassed about getting his pants down and, and showing his undies. I don't know. He, he's, he, he, there must have been some sort of um, uh, wetter works going on, perhaps, when he was doing those, <laughs> those, those nude days, because uh, from what we've seen, he, he doesn't fill them out particularly well. <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies. Shall we be using Graham Carr? <laughs> I, I don't know about Graham Carr. I'm not sure what uh, we're meant to be depicting here, but uh, it doesn't look too good, Mark Ellis. I thought he was a bit of a ladies' man, not a sheep's man. Well, well, no, no, you're wrong because he's not a ladies' man. That's a that's a that's a weather. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the weather was a pet. Um, I think it actually belonged to Mark and he brought it down on the plane from, from Auckland. So Talking about this sort of thing, we're going to go back to you, Jody. What sort of man do you like? Not one in a cross college uniform. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excuse me, Tony Quinn. Can you, can you please not say that around Ron Schroeder? He's going to give me a hard time for the rest of the night about that. <laughs> Jody. I, I do like myself a country boy. Yeah. Are you single at the moment? Oh, there's a pause! <laughs> there's, there's a song in there, isn't there? There is a silence yeah. there. Yeah. Mm, I don't really know how to answer. Yeah, don't answer, don't answer. <laughs> Tony, how are you coping with all this, Karen? I want to talk about Sharon. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to be the one millionth person to ask her when the venison prices are going to come up. a bloody good question. When are they going to come up, Sharon? Well, apparently, very soon. Silver Fern Farms. You've come from a pretty good background of, um, I understand, good brands, mainland cheese. Yeah. Now yeah. Silver Fern Farms. There's a link there, Blackie, because the deer farmers have been patient, like the cheese maker. <laughs> We've been waiting for this, TW. <laughs> well, actually, um, the good things take time would be a good slogan to use, yeah. don't you think? What's yeah. wrong with that? <laughs> our, old our two old men were pretty iconic, yeah. They were pretty cool, actually. One was from, uh, recruited from a bowling club, and one was recruited from an actual uh, fishing club. They weren't actors, and they were bloody useless. First day of filming when we made the mainland ads, and I was in a bit of shit, actually, at the time, because um, we'd made an ad, and it really did take a lot of time, because it was dependent on ice. We're doing a curling ad, 
and it took three years to make. Wouldn't actually survive. I would have been fired by that man down there if I had to. <laughs> but I said to my boss, which was Alan McConnell at the time, and I um, said, so we've got to make another ad. And I said to the agency, uh, can't be dependent on weather. And uh, it was 1999, and they said, no, no way, we'll do it in Queenstown, do it in the mainland, and we'll be out at Glenorchy, and guaranteed fine weather. What happened? The days of the floods of Queenstown, 1999, the day we started production. Oh. So it was a bit of a, a fatal day, but the two guys were useless, and uh, what did they do? They couldn't act to save themselves, the two old men, and they actually spent the week in the pub. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, Is there a better place? no, no better place. But every day, <laughs> keep them in the pub. And by the end of the week, they had this amazing rapport. I mean, they were probably wearing swan drawer. Actually, <laughs> they bloody were. And um, they bloody were. That's yeah, they, they were. And one of them, you know, very sad, but one of them died last year. And I went to the funeral, and I've never been so proud. They had a block of mainland cheese on his coffin. <laughs> really? 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 Rural TV. Tell us about yourself. Well, that's a bit of a hard one, Blackie. I'm lazy. <laughs> You've got a bloody good job, though. You meet some good people. I have got the best job in the world, I believe that. Yeah. You were telling me a story about what your father said when you left school. Head down, ass up, combs and cutters, and uh, life's not all beer and skittles. And uh, uh, I think I've proved him wrong. <laughs> 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 I don't play Skittles. <laughs> Jody, I'm going to come back to you. You've come from small town Wanaka, yeah. and you're going to be making it to Nashville. Did you say Nashville or International? Nashville! <laughs> said Nashville. Oh my okay. god. <laughs> <laughs> What's that like? <laughs> Nashville is an amazing city. If anyone ever gets an opportunity to go, definitely go. It's um, full of talent. Yeah, Nashville is a good time. Like the um, Broadway, where all the honky tonk bars are, is a lot of fun. It's just live country music, twenty four seven, pretty much. So. Is yeah. it like a big gore? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite different to gore. <laughs> Chanel, you've come from a big town. You've come from Auckland to Mayfield. <laughs> Hello, but you're making it big. You've got a pretty big page out there. Tell us about it. Yeah, um, I, about a year ago, I started off a page called Farming Mums NZ, and it was kind of to link, link everyone together. That was the gist of it. And it started with zero people a year ago, and it's up to 1,700 women all throughout New Zealand, um, including Chatham Islands and all sorts, and some overseas mm -hmm. ex expats. Um, the, probably the average age would be around 25 to 35, with a huge proportion being dairy farmers, but there are some dairy farmers out there. Yay! <laughs> and um, there's, yeah, there's some awesome people on it, and it's just a really awesome support network. Um, we've got our first conference coming up next June, which um, I've been putting off for a while because it seems like a hell of a lot of work, especially looking around today. Do you want to live stream it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> it might actually not be a bad idea. Not all 1,700 women are going to make it, but um, I've had 100 people interested already, which is a bit daunting. Um, so with a whole year to go, I don't know what's going to happen, really. It's, yeah, it's growing very quickly, 10 to 15 women by the day, and yeah, it's really positive, really positive place. Fantastic. Um, many who are familiar with um, the Graham Norton show, we've got the Red Chair. My parents took me to a small farmer's sale. <laughs> anyway, we were going to a small farmer's sale and we took the ute there. And so. <laughs> Dad, I can't even understand a word you were saying. <laughs> okay, Dad was looking for some animals and things to take home to our farm. And so, anyway, him and Mum spotted this new dining room table. Cheers. <laughs> Dad thinks it's a very good idea. Oh, I know what we'll do. You boys want some ice cream out the back? You know, and so we're all ice cream. Next thing you know, we're all sitting there, licking our ice creams, sitting on the back. Dad decides, seeing a bit of Formula One, he'd like to take the corner, probably a bit quicker than he should have. Me on my chair, shh, bang, fall down, on the road, like that. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, that's 
Crown Norton version of the red chair. We have got grassroots and garden boots version of the red chair. Let me introduce to you Rusty Andrews. Yeah. Where is he? Yeah. The big red himself. Rusty, hey, don't be fella. Nice hey, you're looking pretty good. Now, do you understand what happens on the what red chair, big fella? <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to ask him what he has underneath him. <laughs> And I understand you've got a pretty damn good story to tell about grassroots and gumboots. Grassroots and gumboots. Well, I mean, look, look, I mean, let's face it, everyone thinks I'm gay already after the photo. <laughs> <laughs> the first idea came around to get Swan Dry involved. Um, I was just like meeting with Mark, oh, yeah. knowing his boss. And, and, uh, Can I just interrupt here for a second? Does the carpet match the curtains? It does indeed. Good boy. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so, so, as you were. So anyway, we had a meeting with Mark, we went to Maribel, had a coffee, and we um, had a good, good yarn, and this guy walked in, I thought, that's got to be him. And look, he was hot. And let's face it, Mark knew <laughs> What? Oh, that's Bella's brother. That's my lovely daughter, Bella, there. She's a golden man. Um, <laughs> Since Mark, I've now spent $978 on myself on clothes. Because you had a man affair with Mark. Yeah. Pretty well, I don't know what you think, but I don't know if that's worthwhile or tipping over, but no, no. what do you guys reckon? Go. Definitely. Go. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yet to be released, ladies and gentlemen. This is a fantastic song. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Jody Green. How you doing? Didn't seem so crazy at the time Ooh, we lived in love just like a hurricane The storm is passing now we're through That's why I'm telling you There's another they say on my tattoo But just for tonight Thank you so much. <laughs>